Hello everyone. Welcome to today's chemistry class. Today we will uh, start a new lesson that is solid state. So in this chapter we discuss solid state and the properties of uh, solids. So we can start the new chapter solid state. So first of all we should know what is matter. Solid is a uh, state of matter physical state of matter so first of all you should know what is matter so matter is defined as anything that has mass and occupies space or it has volume so matter is anything that has mass and takes up volume and space okay so and as we have all studied that uh, this uh, matter has three main physical states solid liquid and gases and many other states are there but usually we study only these three so here in this chapter we discuss solid state okay physical state solid state so uh, this is an intermolecular uh, structure of uh, solid this is the intermolecular structure of solid so solid particles are arranged in a particular pattern so we can discuss what are solids or characteristics of solids they have definite mass definite volume and shape these things we have already studied so solids have definite mass volume and shape and intermolecular distances are short that means particles are very tightly very tightly packed so there is no distance very small distance between the in molecules okay so intermolecular forces are strong so the force of attraction between the molecules in solid is very very strong so and their constituent particles like atoms molecules or ions have fixed positions and can only oscillate about their main position that means uh, the particles that the constituent particles that means ions or molecules or uh, atoms are uh, they have a fixed position okay and we know that they are solids are incompressible and rigid rigid and incompressible these are the characteristics of solids now this uh, solids are classified into two categories crystalline substances or crystalline solids and amorphous solids so solids are mainly classified into crystalline solids and amorphous solids it is also known as crystalline substances or amorphous substances so we can see what they are the differences between crystalline and amorphous uh, solids so actually crystalline solids they have a regular arrangement crystalline solids have a uh, regular arrangement and amorphous solids they have an irregular arrangement they do not have a regular arrangement okay so uh, we can discuss what are the differences between these so crystalline solids definite characteristic geometrical shape that means they have a definite shape and amorphous solids they have irregular shape and crystalline solids have uh, sharp melting point sharp melt at a sharp temperature that means sharp melting point and amorphous gradually soften over a range of temperature that means they do not have a sharp melting point and crystalline solids when cut with a sharp edge tool when uh, this crystalline solids cut to the sharp edge tool they split into two pieces and the newly generated surfaces are plain and smooth so when you cut the crystalline solid you get two pieces and the newly face or new surface generated is plain and smooth okay and when you cut uh, this amorphous solid with a sharp edge tool they cut into two pieces with irregular surfaces 
with irregular sur surfaces okay so when you cut in the case of crystalline solids when you cut a wooden piece you get a uh, plain and smooth uh, surface and when you get, uh, cut a uh, rubber or uh, uh, plastic you get a irregular surface that means this uh, solid uh, crisp crystalline solids this crystals substance nacl cesium chloride these are the examples of a crystalline solids and for amorphous solids rubber plastic these are the examples for amorphous solids and crystalline solid they have a definite and characteristic enthalpy of fusion and amorphous solids they do not have definite enthalpy of fusion okay then crystalline substances anisotropic in nature anisotropic this thing we will discuss later what is anisotropic and isotropic crystalline solids are uh, anisotropic in nature amorphous solids are isotropic in nature and crystalline solids are known as true solids amorphous solids are known as pseudo solids or super cooled liquids okay pseudo solids or super cooled liquids and crystalline solids have a long range or that means they are regularly arranged and amorphous solids they have only short range order they do not have a regular pattern of arrangement these are the differences between crystalline and amorphous solids so we here we can see the arrangement of particles in crystalline as well as amorphous solids in crystalline solids the particles are very closely arranged the voids that means in between uh, are vacant space valare korvana so in crystalline solids uh, the particles are very tightly arranged and you can see in this picture that they have a definite arrangement valare valare adithum valare krithyamaya arrangement undu and in amorphous solids they do not have a regular arrangement okay and the particles are loosely arranged when you compare with the crystalline solid okay so we can discuss what is isotropic and anisotropic nature certain properties of solids like a refractive index you know what is refractive index when measured from different directions will result in different values for crystalline solids for crystalline solids uh, uh, the certain uh, physical properties such as refractive index when you measure with from different direction it will result in different values for crystalline solids okay mm, this is called anisotropic nature of crystals and amorphous substances do not show this property and hence they are isotropic that means they have uh, same uh, for different direction it have same values for uh, same values they have that means they are isotropic okay that means for uh, all the direction uh, the values uh, the physical property is same so it is not an isotropic for amorphous and for crystalline it is anisotropic okay now amorphous substances are so we have uh, already seen that amorphous substances is also known as pseudo solids or super cooled liquids what is the reason for that so we can uh, see the reason for that amorphous substances are usually termed as pseudo solids or super cooled liquids because of the ability of amorphous solids to flow okay so they and uh, like uh, fluids liquids this amorphous solids has uh, it they have a tendency to flow so they are known as pseudo solids or super cooled liquids okay and a glass is an example of uh, uh, amorphous solids this glass tends to become milky in appearance over a long period of time this is because of slow crystallization of glasses നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ജനലിൻ്റെ ഒക്കെ പഴയ വളരെ പഴകിയ ജനലിൻ്റെ ഒക്കെ ഗ്ലാസ് നോക്കി മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ പറ്റും അതിനൊരു മിൽക്കി അപ്പിയറൻസ് ഉണ്ട് ഓക്കെ മിൽക്കി അപ്പിയറൻസ് ദിസ് ഈസ് ഡ്യൂ ടു ദ സ്ലോ ക്രിസ്റ്റലൈസേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഗ്ലാസസ് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ദിസ് അമോർഫസ് ലിക്കൺ ഈസ് യൂസ് ടു മേക്ക് ഫോൾ ഫോട്ടോ വോൾട്ടായിക് സെൽസ് സോ അതുപോലെ ഈ 
ജനലിൻ്റെയൊക്കെ പഴകി കുറേ പഴകി ജനലിൻ്റെ ഗ്ലാസിൻ്റെയൊക്കെ അടിഭാഗമൊക്കെ കുറച്ച് തിക്കായിട്ടുണ്ടാവും കാരണം എന്താണ് ഈ അമോർഫ സോളിഡ് മുകളിൽ താഴേക്ക് ഒഴുകി അവിടെ തിക്കായതാണ് വളരെ കുറേ കാലം എടുത്ത് സോ അമോർഫ സോളിഡ്സ് ആർ സ്യൂഡോ സോളിഡ്സ് ഓർ സൂപ്പർ കൂൾ ലിക്വിഡ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ദേ ഹാവ് ഇൻഡൻസി ടു ഫ്ലോ ഓക്കെ അപ്പോൾ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വൈ ദീസ് ആർ ആ സൂപ്പർ കൂൾ ലിക്വിഡ്സ് ഓർ സ്യൂഡോ സോളിഡ്സ് now we can see the classification of crystalline solid okay crystalline solids are classified into uh, this four main categories molecular crystals ionic crystals network crystals metallic crystals and this molecular uh, crystals are again classified into non polar polar hydrogen bond so crystalline solids are classified into മോളിക്കുലർ അയോണിക് നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് ഫോർ കോവലൻറ്റ് മെറ്റാലിക് ദെൻ മോളിക്കുലർ സോളിഡ്സ് ആർ അഗെയിൻ ക്ലാസിഫൈഡ് ഇൻ ടു നോൺ പോളാർ പോളാർ ആൻഡ് ഹൈഡ്രജൻ ബോണ്ട് ഓക്കെ സോ വി ക്യാൻ ഡിസ്കസ് ദിസ് അയോണിക് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽസ് ലാറ്റിസ് പോയൻസ് ആർ ഒക്കുപ്പേഡ് ബൈ ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് സോ ഇൻ അയോണിക് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽസ് യു ഹാവ് വി വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് ലാറ്റിസ് പോയിൻ്റ് ദാറ്റ് വി വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് ലൈറ്റർ ദിസ് അയോണിക് ഇൻ അയോണിക് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽസ് പോസിറ്റീവ് ആൻഡ് നെഗറ്റീവ് അയോൺസ് ആർ ദേർ ആസ് കോൺസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂൻസ് ദേ ഹാർ ദേ ആർ ഹാർഡ് ആൻഡ് ബ്രിട്ടിൽ ആൻഡ് അയോണിക് കോമ്പോ അയോണിക് സോളിഡ്സ് ആർ വെരി ഹാർഡ് ആൻഡ് ബ്രിട്ടിൽ സോളിഡ്സ് ദേ ഹാവ് ഹൈ മെൽറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ഡ്യൂ ടു വെരി സ്ട്രോങ് ഇലക്ട്രോസ്റ്റാറ്റിക് ഫോഴ്സ് ഓഫ് അട്രാക്ഷൻ ദേ ഹാവ് ഹൈ മെൽറ്റിംഗ് പോയിൻറ്റ് ഡ്യൂ ടു വെരി സ്ട്രോങ് ഇലക്ട്രോസ്റ്റാറ്റിക് ഫോഴ്സ് ഓഫ് അട്രാക്ഷൻ ഓക്കെ ദേ ആർ പേർ കണ്ടക്ടേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ഇലക്ട്രിസിറ്റി ഇൻ സോളിഡ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ബട്ട് ഗുഡ് ഇൻ മോൾട്ടൺ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് or an aqueous phase they are poor conductors of electricity in solid state but uh, good in molten state packing of spheres depends upon presence of charged species present difference in the size of anions and cations two types of ionic crystals are there ab types ab2 this we will discuss later okay it will come after some uh, portions then covalent crystals It, that means covalent crystals are uh, occupied by the points or constant particles are neutral atoms then atoms are held together by covalent bond so in covalent crystals covalent bond is there they uh, they are also hard uh, solids and they have high melting point per conductors of electricity two common examples diamond and graphite okay diamond and graphite then molecular uh, crystals molecular solids so lattice points are occupied by neutral molecules lattice points are occupied by neutral molecules they are held together by weak van der waals forces they are held together by weak van der waals forces very soft solids they have low melting point okay pure conductors of electricity these are the properties of uh, molecular solids and then this molecular crystals or molecular solids are again classified into non polar molecular solids that we have discussed okay non polar they are held together by weak forces or london forces uh, they are very soft non conductors of electricity and and low melting point they are very soft non conductors of electricity and have low melting point the example is 2 cl2 i2 etc okay uh, then polar molecular solids so polar covalent bonds here molecules having polar covalent bonds are held together by dipole dipole interaction in the case of polar molecules they are held together by dipole dipole interaction okay example so2 nh3 they are also soft and non conductors of electricity and the last type of molecular solid is hydrogen bonded molecular solid the molecules are held together by strong hydrogen bonds here in molecular in hydrogen bonded molecular solid the molecules are held together by a uh, strong hydrogen bonds example ice okay last one is metallic crystals here lattice point that means uh, here positively charged metal ions surrounded by a sea of mobile electron so these are they are metals okay metallic bonds are there in metallic crystals metallic bonds are there again okay, in metals positive ions are embedded in a sea of valence electron here positive ions are surrounded by a sea of mobile electron or we can say 
the positive ions are embedded in a co valence electron okay soft the some soft metals are there and many of the metals are very hard metals have high tensile strength we already studied the properties of metals metals have high uh, tensile strength good conductors of electricity they are malleable and ductile bonding electrons in metals remain delocalized over the entire crystal they have high density okay these are the properties of metallic crystal okay all metals are good conductors of heat and electricity due to the presence of free electrons some metals are soft and have low melting point while the others are hard with high melting point and high heat of fusion okay the metallic forces are the attractive forces between positive metal ions and the co valence electron okay these are the uh, properties of metallic crystal okay so that is all about uh, today's uh, chemistry class thank you